Hey guys, Mario Pesha here from Devrix. This is Mario here with me. Uh, today's topic is how do you know if you're good at software development? Um, you know, lots of people can start a job in software development. Um, it's not that challenging. I mean, obviously the first job is a bit tricky, but you know, their demand is simply too high. So a lot of people have an opportunity to actually start a job in the software development industry. The question is how can you as a software developer can establish whether you're a good developer or a bad one. How can you compare yourself to the other people within the organization or to you know the people in the industry as well? Or, or generally, how, how can you actually acknowledge that you're a good developer? It's a really complicated, complicated question due to the fact that there are no clear standards or regulations as to what defines a good software developer. There are tons of different courses telling you what are you supposed to know as a developer. Uh, there are the universities, uh, you know, being kind of a you know regulator for the qualifications of entry level developers, which are almost always insufficient. Uh, there are like Olympiads and competitive programming challenges and whatnot that are kind of trying to define different entries. But there's no there isn't any governmental or non-profit organizations taking care of those for the entire landscape of software developers. And there's somewhat a good reason about for that. Uh, different companies need different types of software development. Um, we, do, we do provide WordPress development services and we've conducted probably over 800 interviews for WordPress developers. And probably over 85% of those were people who apply for a WordPress development position, which is a PHP developer with at least three years of experience and so on. Uh, and, you know, essentially a programmer who tends to use the WordPress platform as well. And at least 80 something percent of them didn't have any programming experience at all, which means that they were simply site builders, site configurers, site in installers, and so forth. As a result, uh, those people are actually employed as such and you know they come with you know two years of WordPress development experience in a company as a role WordPress developer and so forth but they haven't really done that and they state in their CV that they've spent you know two three years in PHP but basically they can't really even write a hello world uh, hello world program uh, so to speak so it's again it's a bit tricky because different companies obviously need different types of skills but still how can you understand whether you're a good software developer the short answer is you can't. Uh, in a nutshell, what you need to do is, of course, compare yourself to the other people within the organization. How much do they know? How fast do they work? How much back and forth there is for their work within the organization? Like, how often do you, uh, you know, get kind of negative feedback from the team in terms of uh, constructive feedback for things that you need to change and update uh, how many iterations would you require to fix something how much back and forth there is for all the assignments that you're supposed to do uh, within the job and, and so on and so on the list goes on but those are kind of some of the subjective metrics that you can take into account of course you can always talk to your team leader or your manager but it's still unclear because they themselves may not be a good kind of evaluation metric when compared to the, you know, 20 million something developers available uh, worldwide, right? Because it's a completely different thing. Um, also, you may be kind of among the number, you know, top 10% developers within your organization, but it doesn't mean that you're among the top 10% worldwide. For example, if you work in a uh, you know, 20 person company and you have like three or four developers uh, building pet projects and general standard things, you don't have to know that much to be among the top 10%, which is basically one of the four most competent people, right? Because development is not a core focus, you're probably not serving high scale enterprise customers or uh, anything else that, that may require actual core expertise. So you may be the best in that company, uh, but non eligible for starting even a you know, generic development job uh, outside of that skill. So you have to compare yourself with other people through conferences and meetups and, and blogs and all that stuff. But it's still really hard to quantify and qualify. So uh, a few good ways to do that. First off, maintain, you know, open source repositories. Try to build your pet project solving different types of business problems. This way you'll know that you can solve, you know, a, a wide variety of kind of technical challenges or business challenges through code uh, and this will give you the confidence that you would be you know performing somewhat fast 
or not uh, when compared to others. Also, this will give you the opportunity to keep learning through different software technologies and different technical stacks and whatnot. So that's one more thing. Uh, try uh, if you're into competitive programming, which I think is is fairly useless uh, for the you know business world. At least 99% of the companies don't use it. But a good way is to use Hacker Rank or you know some of the top down challenges or something else in order to just compete on the basis of algorithms and data structures and and stuff like that. Uh, if nothing else, at least this will teach you something about performance. Uh, but on the other end. You know, this won't really teach you about code quality and maintainability and all the other things that matter uh, outside of the world of competitive programming. Um, join communities. If you, if you can join an open source community and start contributing there, this would be great because probably there are going to be tens or hundreds of other people, maybe even thousands, who are busy doing day-to-day -day development. So they may help you out and they may assist you and uh, kind of help you go through and push further. Because with open source, especially kind of more popular software applications, uh, they're used across, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions or tens of millions of systems using that specific software. So it's really easy to, well, it, it's actually really hard to maintain them. So you have to take care of a lot of different things and you can learn a lot and be a better programmer by more careful, more uh, kind of error free uh, producing error-free code and, and generally kind of uh, improving your skills upon. Uh, but still, <coughs> those are definitely things that you can do and uh, things that you are going to improve your work uh, overall, but still you won't be able to kind of measure yourself up to the, the, the whole industry. So as a rule of thumb, uh, don't uh, ever think that you're kind of the, the, the best programmer in the world or something like that. If you want to become better, you need to constantly keep, keep learning and solving complex problems and taking upon uh, different challenges that are kind of pushing your limits and pushing your boundaries and making you solve a uh, new different set of problems. Uh, try building, you know, open source stuff. Try, you know, competing or participating in hackathons or other projects with other developers in working outside of work. Do workshops, participate in external, uh, participate in external activities, uh, and generally try to engage and communicate and, and get as many ideas as possible and learn new things and compile things that you need to learn about. Uh, but definitely don't try to compare yourself within the organization alone uh, or by reading blogs or anything uh, along those lines. It's it's like almost 100% sure that there are many, 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 many developers much better than you and you can learn a lot from them. The question is whether, again, you're in the top 1%, 10%, 30%, 50%, and so on. You would never know, but uh, at any point of time, you need to keep striving for the uh, you know highest tier of developers out there.